All right. I am going to take a swing at free will today. Yes, sir. Um, so this is going to be an attempt to summarize my position on free will. Uh, had a couple of debates, discussions on it, and I've been reformulating some things. And what I'd really like this to be is more of a corroborative argument between libertarian free will and determinism. Uh, in other words, I find there to be more value in discovering how compatible or how how libertarian free will can be seen as compatible with determinism than I do uh, seeing any value with one side winning over the other. I don't think it's quite possible yet for either side to win because I think both sides are kind of not fully acknowledging the full range of experiences we're having. Um, I think that's part of the problem with, with debate as a tactic, but that's, that's not my topic, so I'm not going to go there right now. Um, so the compatibilist position I'm trying to take is what I call self-determinism. Uh, and by self-determinism, I mean that the whole person determines actions and belief. Uh, that externalities may influence that, may be a part of the process, but that we are never caused by what is external to us. We are caused by our brain, by who we are, by um, the process of thinking and determination itself. So it's kind of a tongue-in-cheek uh, uh, term. I'm not using self-determinism, the term that means prior cause, prior states cause current states. Uh, that's a pretty good definition. Uh, I'm not actually referring to that term. I'm speaking of determination. But I'm, I'm alluding to determinism by using that, that, that term. Uh, so if determinism is that prior states cause... No, I'm not ready to go into that. Sorry. Um, so the way... Shoot, how should I do this? Sorry. This is this is the second time I've tried to do this video, and I keep fumbling. Um, how do I need to do this? So I'm suggesting that this version of determinism that I'm speaking of, of, no, I'm sorry, this version of free will, which I'm calling self-determinism, is compatible with determinism, is in the sense, uh, is through... Uh, what I would call systemic emergence. Uh, and the whole argument here is, you know, a system is something like a set of, of uh, substances or, or atoms or whatnot, whatnot of qualities, a set of qualities interacting in set of, such a way that they result in an effect that would otherwise be impossible. You know, no lone atom in the universe would be able to produce the effect of me riding in a car safely down the highway, for instance. It is only through the emergence of all these different atoms, not in, not in any order, but in a very particular order, uh, that allows this process to happen. Uh, if you had a pile of metal and oil and... Uh, in fire, <laughs> uh, in most other orders, you would just have a heap of ruin. You would not have, I'm safely driving down the highway. So that's an emergent system. It is the statement that whatever our core theory of the most smallest particles of the universe happens to be, uh, we have to have other theories that explain other phenomenon as the bits of the core theory come together in unique ways. Uh, and that that uniqueness is a feature of the universe, not of the particles. That unique emergence is, is... That's the best way I can think of it, at least. Is that we are talking about how there is something about the nature of the universe such that when different bits of the universe come together, they, 
they can be put together in such a way to create these emergent properties. That being the case, it looks to me that what we think of as determinism has is is functional in one way on a uh, quantum level, is functional in another way on an atomic level, and then is functional in another way on a kind of social level, on a human social innovative uh, practical level. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to move on from that. I'll, I'll try to come back to that if I think I need to. Um, but I want to get to how this is compatible with libertarian free will. Um, what I think libertarian free will is trying to avoid is this apparent conclusion from determinism that human, that the individual is not in charge of their fate. And I think this is entirely a flaw in the language that determinism uses on that level. Uh, that it is not evolving its language to uh, to be used on the social level. Uh, and I want to be clear, because like some people will use things like, they will say, well, the language of free will is useful in a social sense. We, we, we can't not use it. I would argue we can't not use the language of oughtness of free of responsibility, all of which seems to be implied or embedded in this notion of free will. I don't think you can speak of oughtness and responsibility without saying something about the individual's freedom to do those things. And I know there's people that that try to, to say you can, but it seems like the moment you try to get away from some sort of notion that the term free will can point to. I don't know exactly what uh, definition of free will. Well, the definition I'm trying to use is self-determinism. Uh, that I am the I am the being who makes the choice, not those external forces around me. Um, okay. So, an absolute sense of libertarian free will, I cannot accept because no individual is free from being an individual in the moment. And this is where determinism tries to put their thumb down and say, ah, I got you, libertarian. See, in that moment, you are not free. Well, that's true, because you're not free from yourself in that moment. You can reverse time a million times, and you will always make the same choice, uh, because unless you're using some kind of random decision-making process, uh, you will make that choice, because that's who you are. And we shouldn't try to argue that we are free from who we are. That's ridiculous. However, I would argue for what I call, and I had to write it down, <laughs> uh, chronologically dense constructed potentials. Now you know why I had to write it down. <laughs> so what do I mean by that? All right, what is a constructed potential? I'll start there. So a an actual potential, I don't know if we can actually speak much of other than in the sense of determinism, uh, which is to say, you know, there, you know, there's A affecting B resulting in C. Uh, that, let's say, let's say, uh, how shall I go about this? You could talk about that either in a predictive model or you could say in the hypothetical scenario of reversing time and replaying it. Either way, A plus B results in C. Um, and so that is, you know, if the model is correct, it, it shows that A plus B determines C. And if, our, if we could reverse time and replay it, once again, we would be showing that A plus B results in C. So that is what I mean by something like a actual potential. Uh, the, the, the theory, the, the prediction, or the actual fact that a thing happened resulting in something else. Uh, 
by a constructed potential, I mean the human capacity to judge that I, for instance, am tired of some habit that I'm in. I've observed why I do this thing, and I'm going to try to change it, either by forming new habits, uh, by by changing my my cognitive behavior, so that any time I feel the impulse to do it, I instead replace that impulse with another impulse, these kind of things. Uh, those are constructed potentials. The theory of becoming aware of myself, modeling myself, uh, and then deciding uh, to change my... That, that is what I would consider a high level of free will. A low level of free will could also involve constructed potentials. It could simply be something like, uh, I put the key in the ignition and turn the... Turn the igni turn the key and turn on the car. Um, that is a construct I have. Now it also happens to be related to a actual potential. So, so the construct constructed potential is I'm going to do this thing, but maybe it doesn't work. Maybe my car is broken. Maybe the battery is dead. Maybe something else is wrong. Um, maybe it's the wrong key. <laughs> so. What I'm trying to say is that humans create potential uh, constructs, these constructed potentials. Uh, they are potential because we don't know if they're going to work. Uh, they're potential because they are in the mind and not enacted. They're almost like a attempt to read the future or predict the future. Uh, and, you know, there's so much we could say about, about that, but I, I, I hope I've given a sufficient explanation that I can move on to the other part of this, which is chronologically dense. Uh, by chronologically dense, I mean that constructed potentials can evolve and be in relationship with not the moment in time, but a series of moments, perhaps days, weeks, months, years, lifetimes even, as, as cultures can use language and other means to relay this ongoing process of, of a, a constructed potential across time. Chronologically dense, not in the moment, but over however large a scale of time the social system enables. Um, so because of this concept of a chronologically dense constructed potential, my argument is that choice making is chronologically dense. It doesn't happen in the moment. It happens over time. And that these constructed potentials allow us to construct alternatives. Now, they're potentials, right? They're, they're models, attempted models of the future. And then we choose between those. All of that is describable in a deterministic way but if you're trying to make a deterministic argument that is not about such processes, that is not chronologically dense, then you're not looking at the system. You're not actually looking at the way the free will operates. You have to have a correct chronological scope to see the way, the, the way it is free. And it is free in the way I've just tried to describe, which is that I model a series of, of potential futures and I choose between them. Uh, I'm not forced by that. Like, there's no externalization that forces me, you know, unless there's a guy with a gun to my head. But that's not the point, right? That's That that, that would be a completely different scenario than the issue of whether free will can exist. Uh, there's not always a gun at my head. There are influences. I may see something and go, oh my gosh, I'm going to do it this way this time. Um, but over time, I am the process, or you are the process, that makes the choices and that learns from their mistakes and determinism has to be able to make the phase shift to that language uh to be accurate to be talk talking about um free will and a free will that is uh compatible with um 
with determinism and with libertarian free will. Uh, so again, the the libertarian has to be able to say something like, um, not deterministic in the moment, but deterministic over time because I'm the one that determined it. I was determined to do it, though, because I am who I am in the moment. But over time, I, ev I evolve the ability to go beyond who I was in that moment. And I'm the system that does that. It does happen in a deterministic way if you look at each moment. But there is a, a, an emergent principle that is I over time. And that emergent principle, although collectively, individually, is you could say is deterministic, uh, but it is, it is real. It is not an illusion. It is not merely a useful way of talking about things because we, you know, it is, it is real. I am the person who made the choices. Um, there's lots more we could talk about, of course. Uh, there's the idea that, but you didn't choose your past. Of course not. But I choose whether to embrace that past or not. And I choose to modify that past or not. Um, that's why I was talking a little bit about, I think there's small amounts of freedom and large amounts of freedom. And unfortunately, a lot of that is going to depend on how intelligent you are, how creative and innovative you are capable of being, and how much information you have. And how use, how true your sense-making mechanisms are. How, how able you are to make sure that your data is accurate, uh, which none of us completely are, uh, I would argue. I think that's pretty good. Uh, I just got a text that uh, I'm supposed to be going to the grocery store. So bye guys. Hope that I hope that was useful. I hope that uh, that shows a potential way in which determinism and libertarian free will of some vein can shake hands. Because I think that's a more useful position to find. Uh, am I saying never debate about it again? No, not at all. Because debate is always an innovative, interesting process that pushes us and tries to make new, new positions, uh, hopefully, uh, that challenges us. But I think it is useful to have a common ground position. Yeah, okay, thank you.